afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. This is a, well, now it's a bi-weekly Q&A that I do. Every other week, someone else from the Dice Tower will be doing the Q&A because I'm doing At the Table with Tom and Eric those weeks. But hey, I still get to be with you every other week. This is a place where you can ask me questions and I may or may not answer them. I'll try to answer a lot of questions and I think track record shows that I do. Repeating the same question over and over does not mean it will get answered. Sometimes I just choose not to answer questions. So we'll see what happens. Well, this is the, is this the fourth live thing today? So if you've been hanging out with the Dice all Day, thanks. We started with breakfast. We then had Z doing uh, What's Happening, where he played um, Kingdom Builder. And then just a couple hours ago, they did the top 100 games of all time. The A-Team did that. And now here we're finishing up the day with a live Q&A. So welcome. So let's take a look. No questions so far. All right, well, I'll wait for a couple questions. Um, lots of different reviews coming out this week. I've been playing a lot of games lately. Um, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm just excited to... I like playing games. This Saturday, I did something I don't normally do, which is where I played games I've already played before. So got a chance to sit around and play some games. I played... Um, well, I've been playing a lot of... Um, Planet Unknown, so I taught and played that twice on Saturday. I also played Ra, and I, I taught Foundations of Rome. So yeah, it was a lot of fun just playing games I've already played before. Sometimes I just take a, a Saturday and do all that. Then I get back into playing new stuff. So there's that. All right, let's see if we got any um, questions here. Um, from where do you get your seemingly endless motivation? Well, you know, that's that. I mean, the fact that I'm putting this here, let me see if I can make this a little easier for y'all to read. Blue seems hard to read. There we go. Um, that sounds a little self-serving, me putting that on there, but I don't know. I just have always you motivate. Uh, Self-motivation is not a bad thing, especially when I want the Dice Tower to be the best channel it can possibly be. We constantly have discussions. We I just had one right beforehand. We were talking with the team about um somewhat minor change I want to make on the Dice Tower, but something I think that would make the Dice Tower better. We always want to make it better. And the motivation also helps when people actually watch this stuff, so that helps too. Um, what is the next classic Four Square review? Well, I can tell you straight up, it's Careers. So we uh, took a look at, we played Careers live well, last week, I think, so that's coming next week. This week, our Four Square review is going to be um, Something of the Merchant's Guild. I forget the name of the game because it's a very forgettable uh, name. I'm not saying the game's forgettable, but the game, the, the name is. Would we ever do Yahtzee or Backgammon? Yeah, 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 sure. Contest reminder also. Oh, you know, I don't know how I would always forget these contests here, but not a problem. This is a, a contest here for game nerds. So, um... If you want to get a $10 gift certificate from Game Nerds, all you need to do is email us at contest at dicetower.com. And in the subject line, put the word vertigo. Ooh, interesting word to pick, vertigo. Um, and you get a $10 gift certificate for the best online board game store there is. Fantastic selection. Quick delivery every day at 2 o'clock. They do a daily deal, at least on weekdays, and fantastic sales and stuff. So... Check them out, Game Nerds. And answer the contest. Good luck to everybody. What's my favorite root faction? Uh, the cats. I love to see a live play with the crew. Maybe, but I, I'm hesitant to do a game that people know so well. Uh, we would get a lot of garbage over us playing the factions. A, it's easy to make rules mistaken root. And B, we wouldn't play them to the best of their abilities. So we'll have to see. What are your thoughts on Simon uh, and their shipping scandal? Um, well, I don't think it's particularly a scandal. And we had a whole video based on this where we talked about this as part of it called Shipping is Expensive. Check it out on Friday to hear some feedback from actual real publishers. Let's see here. I was checking out last night. The planet pieces look like cool marbles. Are they the remains of the losers from Shoots and Marbles? No, they're not. <laughs> when you're putting together a top 100 list, how does the actual order of games develop? Do you just say game three, five, 
6-4 is better than game 43, so it ranks in the next spot higher. And keep repeating, something like that. Usually I can pull out all the games I know are in my top 20 or 30. I'm like, oh, this is definitely in the top 30. And then I just sort those out. Easy. For the rest of them, I put them in piles and make them better. I've done a video on this before, so I'm not going to go into full detail. But I just keep sorting around until I get it done. It's Tommy from Texas. Do you think Kickstarter and GameFound will stop offering the $1 pledge to force people to commit or not? You know, I was thinking about this. I think that this is going to happen at some point. Because at this point in time, why back a game for more than a dollar? As uh, Unless you think it's not going to fund. But let's say it's funding. Then there's no real reason for me to do anything other than to back a dollar. Because I will then just fill out my pledge in a pledge manager. That's at least my thinking on the subject. Oh, I get this every year. What's your recommendation for can't miss games of demo at Gen Con this year? I don't have any recommendations because I don't know any games that are coming out at Gen Con. I haven't put any thought into Gen Con. It's still three uh, weeks away. I, I don't know. Just go demo games. There's a gazillion you haven't played. Um, any news on the new studio and how it's coming along? Well, I, like I said last week, um, the main thing is getting a... We need to get a shed here at the studio to move everything from the garage to the shed, and then we'll start modifying the garage. Um, so the shed has been purchased. The shed, we just had the um, the, the city, Miami-Dade inspectors came out, the first round of that. Um, doing things legally is a real pain in the neck, but that's what we're doing. And so they came out and did an inspection, and we got some some stuff that they're going to be working on. So the shed should be done near the end of June, which is a little hairy for me because that's the week before Dice Tower East. Hopefully there's no delays. We'll get that shed in. Then we have to get it inspected again. Then we need to make sure our you know, electricity is installed in it and stuff so that the stuff in it doesn't get destroyed. And then we're going to put all, we're going to move everything in. Then we work in the garage. My goal to have the new studio in play, I would like to have it in play by say September. Let's see here. Hello, Tom. It looks like more and more putting corona, I'm assuming you've seen me, coronavirus more and more behind us. Have you noticed this trend within the board game world? To some degree, people are moving on with their lives. It still is something that people are talking about with conventions as to whether conventions are masked or not. And this is actually a pretty big thing online. Um, doesn't matter what you do at this point. If you run a convention, you are definitely going to get feedback whatever you do. You know, in Dice Tower West, we made, we had a, a mask only room and a mask optional room. And there are many people who really, you know, yelled at us about that. Um, if Dice Tower East is going to be, um, you don't have to wear a mask there. Um, currently, we'll have people yell at us about that. Gen Con, you have to wear a mask there. And people are yelling about that. It doesn't matter what you do, people are going to argue about this. And I don't suspect that that's going to go away for years. Um, Viticulture World reframed a competitive game as cooperative. Are there any other games that you would want to see receive the same treatment? No. Uh, to the point where, if you watch the review, I didn't want Viticulture to get a cooperative game. It worked. It's fine. I like it. Hooray! But I still don't desire it. I still prefer, actually, I like Viticulture better without the cooperative mode, but the cooperative mode works. But I, we have a gazillion cooperative games out there. I, I think in the long run, I mean, some of my favorite games are cooperative for sure, but in the long run, I kind of like competitive games. Um, and so, I don't know that some of my favorite competitive games, I suddenly want them to be cooperative. I'm given 10,000 hours to master a skill. What skill do you choose? So I can master any skill I want? Hmm. It'd be one of two things. It would be a language, or it'd be a musical instrument. But I don't know which one, because they would both be pretty handy. Like for a language, I would learn a language of maybe Spanish. That'd be pretty handy here in the area I live in. 
um, a musical instrument. I would like to really master the trumpet or even the piano. Although I don't think 10,000 hours is enough. Maybe it would be. That's a lot. But this is kind of a moot question, and I'll tell you why. Because if I want to master something, I can do it. I have 10,000 hours. Well, maybe not anymore. But maybe 10,000 hours, I can definitely work on something if I really, really want to. What we choose to spend our time on is, you know, everyone has extra free time. If you want to be really good at something, you can be. Tom, do you still get that aha moment when a game just clicks? Um, yes, for sure. Um, let me fix something here. There we go. Um, anyway. Yes, that's something that I really like in games. When I, I It happens. Sometimes it happens really soon into the game. And it's funny because it happens only to me. Because I'll be going over the game. I'm like walking through the rule book. People are sitting there listening to me go, mm, okay, I think we do this and we do this and we do this. Okay, this is how this works. And suddenly I go, got it. And then everyone at the table is like, good. We're glad you got it. <laughs> so. Any specific reason why... Kalimala is up in the background. That's ah, left over from the A-Team's top 100. What's my favorite root vegetable? A potato, for sure. You know, technically a potato is a starch, so if I have to cut out potato, then it goes to carrot. Um, are there any plans for Dice Tower to come to UK this year? No, unfortunately. Or the next. Who knows? It's really expensive for us to come over to the UK, so we would need some sort of help or incentive to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, and I'm not trolling, you know, I'm not trying to fish for that here with this. I'm just saying that's just a fact of life. To take the whole team over somewhere would be pretty pricey. Have I seen the Avatar 2 trailer? Yes. Do you feel like publishers are going to pivot away from large, grandiose games editions, giving the shipping crisis and other economic factors, or do you think they'll wait for consumers to stop buying? I think it's a second. I think when consumers stop buying these big, giant versions, then we'll see publishers stop making them. Do you think saying overrated makes sense? Yes. Um, it's just an opinion, so it doesn't really matter. Um... Would you recommend Wonderland's Wars a game, even if I don't really like Alice in Wonderland as a theme? Ugh. I don't know. Maybe not. The theme is pretty strong in it. So if you don't like Alice in Wonderland as a theme, I might stay away from it. Um, there's not a game that's really similar to it because it's a, a mixture of other games. Like the bag pulling is similar to Quacks of Quellingburg. The ratchet mechanism is similar to a lot of games that do that. Why the one-minute countdown before your live videos? You know what? I'm glad you asked that. There's a couple reasons we do that. One, it gets everyone prepared for it. It gets us prepared for it. It gets the studio audience prepared for it. You know it's coming. It just doesn't start. Um, and there's a lot of things. Like, for example, for us, the comments come up when we start streaming. So a minute, that's the comments come in. People are preparing. You're settling in your seats. It's kind of like the credits before a show. And it just gets everyone prepared. I deliberately limit it to a minute. Because if you go longer than a minute, and to be fair, this isn't necessarily my idea. I was thinking five minutes. The gang talked me down to a minute. But it too long, and I really don't like, and if you do this, I'm not trying to speak ill of you, but I don't like when I go to streams and I don't know when they're starting. It's like, starting soon. Okay, when? And then suddenly it just starts. I'm a big fan of countdowns. It kind of gives you an idea. helps everyone prepare. We're sitting there going, we're starting in a minute. Yes, I mean, we're already on the countdown anyway. You know, when we start, we're going to be starting at that specific time. and But it just happens. It's just like, boom! The countdown, I don't know. Just everybody is getting ready, getting ready, and here we go! Will there be a Gen Con most anticipated video this year? I don't know. Maybe. It all depends if there's enough new games coming out at Gen Con.
A $1 pledge, does a $1 pledge always give you access to the pledge manager? I thought it was only if offered. Yeah, but usually it works. Almost always you get in the pledge manager for a dollar. Speaking of pledge managers, if you have not backed the Dice Tower and you want to back our campaign, you can go to DiceTowerKickstarter.com and do a late pledge to us there, if you want to, of course. Um... Any inside info if Quantum will be receiving a reprint anytime soon? I get asked this all the time about all different games. There is no inside info, folks. If I know a game is going to be reprinted and I'm allowed to tell you about it, we announce it in the news. If I'm not allowed to tell you about it, I'm not going to tell you in a Q&A. <laughs> uh, that being said, can it be added to the Dice Tower Central line? I don't like it enough for it to be in the Dice Tower Central line. I thought it was fine. It's a fine game. I enjoyed it, but I don't love it. I need to love a game if it's going to make it to Dice Tower Essentials. Any more business insider specials like Friday you would like to do? Oh, I have at least 30. Uh, right now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do them. Will I... Uh, what the consistency will be like. I cannot and will not do it on a weekly basis. A weekly show really ties you up. And I mean, some shows are weekly and we want to do that, but I don't want to add it too uh, easily. I'm debating if I want to do it monthly or every two weeks or sporadically, which one I want to do. But you will see more of those because the response to that one was pretty good. Are you having taco salad again this week? No. After a discussion with my children, I found out that even though I was really happy with having it every week, uh, my kids are getting a little tired of it. So I thought, yeah, I, I wouldn't have wanted my parents to make me eat the same thing every week if they were not thrilled with it. So we're having something. Oh, I know what we're having tonight. Budae Chigate from Korea. How's your progress in Elden Ring so far? Did you beat the story yet? No. I am stuck in um, three different... Well, okay, so I'm stuck at the Fire Giant. I think I said that last time I did a Q&A, so it's been a while. I cannot beat the Fire Giant. Um, I have tried and tried and tried, and so if anyone out there wants to help me, we'll bump on him, where you do most of the work and I just run around and try not to die, but also hit the Fire Giant occasionally. That would be fantastic. I also am trying to get into the Halig Tree thing, and I'm stuck on this spot where you need to run and light four lanterns without getting stabbed by these invisible dudes. These invisible dudes just show up out of nowhere and kill me. So I'm flailing around. I occasionally hit them, but and I also tried running from them. The problem is I don't know exactly where to go. So I'm, I'm close to on that particular one, like going on the internet and finding the straightest path to get to lighting all four of these things. Because the little town you run around is very much, it feels like a maze. And so I need to, to like find my steps and go, okay, I'm going to go here, 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 and just run from these invisible guys the whole time. Um... So I'm kind of stuck there. Where's the other spot I'm stuck on? Because I've done really well. There was a, a bad, there was a boss I fought. There's a couple of the big bosses. I still have not beat the, the mist dragon. My word, I came really close last night. And that mist dragon just wailed on me. So I'm trying to figure out like what are good things to use against that that dragon because I've I've killed most dragons thus far so uh, other than that I've killed a lot of the bad guys in this uh, in this particular in the game I'm, I'm, I'm 84 hours in I'm feeling pretty good I've killed a lot of stuff I killed m more than two-thirds I think of all the bosses in the game so I'm feeling pretty good about that and in most areas in the game I'm feeling a little but oh, not cocky is a strong word. Well, cocky is not too strong a word, but I'm feeling pretty good, you know, walking around whooping up on stuff. But I still get killed all the time. Uh, I'm still really enjoying it, but I do wish I could beat the stupid fire giant so I could go to the next level. I mean, I actually have to do that to beat the game. All right. Oriana, hello. I hope you are feeling better. When's the baby due? Well, technically, it was it. They changed the due date. Um, it is due this coming Sunday, which incidentally is my wife and I's 23rd wedding anniversary. So that's exciting. Um, so she may not be there for our 23rd wedding anniversary. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we talked to my daughter a couple days ago. We'll find out. 
Uh, when you see me looking old, you'll know I'm a grandpa. These glasses aren't hurting that uh, thing. A lot of times people ask me questions of these that I don't answer because many times you'll say like, what's the best push your luck games? I literally have a top 10 list for m almost all these. If I see one where I don't have a top 10 list, I might say something, but for the most part, I kind of go by them because uh, that's what the Dice Tower channel is for. You're like, I wonder what Tom's favorite games from a, a company are. I've done it. Favorite games from a designer. Favorite push your luck. I probably have done it somewhere. Who are the Dice Tower official remote reviewers? Well, Brian is our number one remote reviewer because he's done so many. So we got Brian, we got Graham, we got Liz, um, uh, Baccalini, um, we have, uh, oh, I'm forgetting people now. Uh, oh, I guess I could just pull up the uh, folder. I'll tell you who our remote reviewers are. Doo -doo -doo. Our remote reviewers are Amby, occasionally, Blake, Britta, Brian, Claudia, Family Showdown, Felipe, Graham, and Liz. No, wait, sorry, not done yet. Well, oh, and, and Matthew McCack, who doesn't do reviews as much, but does uh, the how to plays. Oh, and Nerd Shelves, so... Yeah, several of them. Some of them are more consistent than others, so that's just how that works. Have I considered doing a top 10 where you have to please the king or royals? I think you joked about it once in an older top 10. You're right. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it someday as a one-off list. I'll be talking about Doctor Strange next board game breakfast a week from today for people who are asking me about that. What's the best way to clean game cards my husband spilled wine on? You have to go online and ask about that. I don't know. Is that statue next to the LED sign a walrus riding a whale? No, no, it's just two. It's two different statues. These are some some uh, manatees, I think. Yeah, it's a manatee, and that's just a, an otter in the background. Do I plan on further expanding the Dice Tower, adding more full-time employees? Well, not at the moment. Um, yeah, that usually just happens as it happens by. We just hired a, a part-time assistant, uh, Carla Drake, to help Jason on the cruise. Um, but uh, for the most part, um, right now I need to spend my money on other things, like upgrading equipment around here. You managed to make a living through your love of board gaming. Uh, well, I would argue that I'd make a living through hard work. <laughs> and, and because of my love for board gaming. Um, do you think it's possible for more people to do it as well as a more unique trade? Well, several people do it. But just you got to go into it knowing you're not going to make a lot of money. No. I have not got my X-Men United yet. No. No, 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 no. Officially, what's the job titles of people in the Dice Tower? I let people pick their own titles for the most part. So, there you go. Would you um, accept a free commercial trip to the moon? Yeah, I would. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd be nervous the whole time. But I think I would do it. Do you have a favorite brand of hot sauce? Um... No, I like smaller... You know, of I guess of the bigger brands, my favorite hot sauce, I just bought it for my daughter because she also really likes it. Uh, let me make sure I get the name right because I always have to look it up. It's called Habanero Hot Sauce by Yellowbird. Yellowbird sauce. I really like this. When I went to BGG Con last time, um, they had it there at the restaurant, and I was like, this stuff is amazing. So, yeah. Why don't you edit out the countdown once the video is no longer live? 
If you edit a live video at all on YouTube, uh, the comments that were made while it's live go away. So that's why. I mean, sometimes we do that because we have to fix something, but we hate losing those comments. Let's see here. Oh, uh, I'm not taking any holiday around the birth of my grand uh, son. My wife is going to go visit them for a while. And I, I just did go visit my kids. There's always the possibility I won't be able to contain myself and I'll shoot up to Pensacola to visit them. But in all likelihood, I can wait. My daughter and her husband are coming, and the baby, are coming to Dice Tower East. So I'll be able to see them there. There's going to be a marathon coming up at some point, isn't there? Any schedule for that yet? Well, I'm glad you asked, actually, because I am working on putting that in a schedule. Currently, and don't hold me to this, it is scheduled for June, which is not too far away. So we're figuring that out exactly, excuse me, um, we're figuring that out exactly where it's going to fit. Once we know, we will announce it. Are there any other Dice Tower former employees besides Sam and Derek? And I can answer this because um, the former employees of the Dice Tower, this is uh, every all the leavings have been congenial. Derek wanted to move back to Colorado. He's now working for Board Game Geek. Sam went to be with his kids up in uh, Washington. He's now working for Mythic Games. And Chris, we had multiple Chris's working here. Chris Barr was one of our video editors and moved away for various reasons. All of them were still in contact with in good terms. And sometimes you'll still hear Chris Barr's music in one of our videos. Let's see here. Um, people are arguing here. About Elden Ring and the Invisible Guys, you can skip them. If you look on the internet, it's a YouTube guide. Sure, sure, I'm sure there is. Um, I just, I always try to do a lot of stuff without using the guide on the internet. Like, I want to see if I can figure it out on my own. I want to see if I can beat this enemy on my own. You know, I beat a couple main bosses yesterday. I beat the, the snake. Um... The snake boss, the giant, the volcano boss, that was cool. Um, but, you know, it took me several tries, and I finally figured out how I could beat it. Um, and that was fun. I, I liked that. My kids laughed at me as I died multiple times. Have you had any nicknames? Not particularly. Um... One of my dad's friends tried to call me TJ when I was a kid that didn't catch on. I was called Four Eyes when I was in kindergarten and first grade. Uh, I don't think that caught on too much. Um, Eek was a name I think some people called me when I was in kindergarten, but I, I don't remember. It was such a long time ago. Most people have called me Tom. Um, my wife calls me Tommy. Um, uh, the um, Vassal, a lot of people call me, but no one, there's no nicknames really. I love the game fixing show. Any preview of the next game or two to be featured? Well, tomorrow is, uh, no, tomorrow, sorry, it's on Wednesday. Wednesday of this week is Wingspan. Um, I don't know. I, I'll pick the game for next week a, a few days from now. I just go through and be like, ah, I'll do this one this week. So I have, I mean, that, that series is going to last a long time because I got so many games that I can fix up on that. Let's see. Who owns the Dragonite plushie appearing in the background of the A-Team's Top 100? I have no idea. I'm assuming it's Chris or Roy or Wendy. It's one of those three. I don't know. It's probably Roy. Um, but it's not me. Explain to me, says Samuel. What is Dice Tower Today? I don't have a show called Dice Tower Today, but I know what you mean. A YouTube channel or a game store or a gaming convention company or all these. Well, it's not a game store. The Dice Tower is a YouTube show um that's all about games and the people who play them 
We put out lots of content, you know, 20 plus hours of content a week, probably. Um, and we hope you enjoy all of it. We put out so much stuff that we hope you like. We also happen to run four game conventions on the side, but I wouldn't call us a gaming convention company. Not until those things start making me money. Currently, they're all operating. Well, I guess Wes is doing okay, but none of them are making me a ton of money, and some of them are operating at a loss, um, like Dice Tower East. A rich person is someone who loves their work, says Kabuki Kid. I agree. Or someone who has... Who loves their life maybe would be a better uh, better option because you can not like your job but love your family and have a great life i'm in the video game slightly i play one game at a time so for an example for the last month and a half and two months i've only played elden ring um before that i played horizon um zero dawn i i started playing horizon forbidden west and jumped over to elden ring i'll go back to horizon uh forbidden west when I'm done with um, Elden Ring, probably. Unless something else catches my eye. I just play one at a time. I, ca I also play games on my iPad. I play some of those dumb little games where you, you, know, you do different things each day. But I also play uh, Hearthstone, which is really a more of a board game than it is a video game. And every once in a while, I get in a Civilization playing mood and play Civilization. Who is the official Dice Tower employee 001? It would be, it's Z. Um, not uh, Sam came on after Z. And Eric, even though Eric's been with me for a while, we didn't make much money way back in the day for the podcast. Yellow Bird out of Austin. We can get that at any store here. Well, you're, you're fortunate then. It's not as common. I've seen it at stores occasionally here in Florida, but very rarely. I get it from Amazon. How old are you now, Tom? I am 45. I will be 46 this September. I love the At the Table podcast. Any spoilers for future guests? Well, next Monday it will be Danny Lowe is our guest. And beyond that, I actually don't know. Do you think you have a good sense for knowing what's going to be the hotness? Um, for example, everyone's loving Ark Nova right now. Did you see that coming? What's the next hotness? It depends when you want to say, did you see it coming? As soon as I played it at Board Game Geek, I said, I really think this game's going to be something. Sometimes I call a hotness of a game. I distinctly, you can go back and read my review for Ticket to Ride. I called that one. I call them occasionally. Sometimes I call them incorrectly, though. So I'm not going to pretend I know games. Sometimes I'll say, ah, this game's not going to be very popular. And then it does really well. And occasionally I call a game and say it will be popular and doesn't. Um, but I'll tell you what, most of the time I'm right when I play a game and go, yeah, this is going to be here and gone. But that's easy to say because that is 99 out of 100 games. No joke. Is there any reason I should keep my physical copy of Gloomhaven aside from custom scenarios? Yeah, really, that's the only reason. But I'll tell you this. Um... I just saw on Reddit somebody made a custom expansion. It's pretty pricey. It costs like 180 bucks or whatever for Gloomhaven. As far as I can tell, he has permission from Isaac. I don't think he's making any money on it. He's just selling it like at cost, I think. I didn't read the whole thread. I'm, I have to go back and look at it again. You're not going to ever see that stuff as digital, so that's kind of a cool thing to do. Besides Pikachu, who's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have any favorite Pokemon. Have you ever thought about opening a board game consulting office? No, I don't think I would like it very much because I'd have to play a lot of bad games to do that. I already play a lot of bad games as is. Is the Chronicles X will be sooner or later review? You might look towards later. It hasn't been played yet. How's that? Would you consider playing the Soul Series after beating Elden Ring? I don't think so, and I'll tell you why. Because I found that whenever I play a game, to go back and play the older one kind of, it, it, it irks me because it's not going to be as good looking as the current one. So for Elden Ring particularly, Dark Souls and all them, they're just not going to look as good. They also don't have the open world, and I love the open world. It's by far, by far, my favorite thing about Elden Ring. So take that away. 
If I had to do Elden Ring, but it was in a linear way, I wouldn't be very interested in it at all. So, so no, I probably won't. And I probably won't play any new ones either, because I like the open world that much. Was it expensive to celebrate a guest like Trey Parker? Well, in the, in the situation of Trey Parker, that was in a sense his donation to our show. He was a fan of the show. He donated by coming on the show. That was very nice of him. Ooh, Nick says, Eek was the G silent. Ooh, that may be the pot and kettle situation there, Mr. Nick. Um, have you played any variation of Sabacc from Star Wars? Only the very, very brief time it's mentioned in the Star Wars collectible card game. Victor, can help me with the fire giant? All right, well, email me about this because I'll forget now. Um... Did you try the new Space Base expansion yet, says Joss, taunting me, because I have not. But I'll tell you this, it's sitting on my porch right now. Or porch, we don't porches in, in uh, Florida. It's sitting on my doorstep right I better be inside, actually. All righty. Would you like a show on the Dice Tower channel reviewing games for online sites such as Board Game Arena, Yucata, Tabletop Somewhere, and Tabletopia? That's an interesting idea. I wouldn't mind that. No one has really made that offer to me to review games from those. But I think that would be an actually useful thing. When people meet someone new, they always ask what they do for a living. It'd be better to ask them what they do for enjoyment, says Kabuki Kid. That's not a bad idea. I ask people what they do for a living because I find that sort of thing fascinating. I'm interested in anyone's job. I mean, some people might have what I might think is a boring job, but I'd like to know why you have the job you have. What made you pick it? Would you ever pull the plug on the Star East if it continues not to make a profit? Probably, we're trying to make a profit. The main reason it hasn't made a profit is because we COVID. I mean, literally, that's two years income down the drain. So we're behind by two years. It was supposed to go in 2020. Then it got canceled in 2021. Now it's happening in 2022. So any profits that were made are spread over three years, which isn't particularly good. Don't feel like that's a bad thing. We'll survive, I hope. But if, yeah, if something doesn't work, I'm not going to let it drag down everything. But... I don't want everyone here to worry about it either. It's mostly because I'm factoring in COVID. What do you order at Chipotle? I always order a bowl, always. Sometimes I get tacos, I guess, but almost always a bowl. Do you have any board game adjacent hobbies? Not really, um, although I will say I uh, spent a couple hours on Friday of last week, sorting out some overpower cards. There's just something about that that I enjoy a lot. Do you think you'll ever do a top 10 language independent games? I'll never say never, but I don't want to. So I don't see me doing it because I just don't care that strongly about that particular subject. Just look at my favorite games and go through them until you find ones that are language independent. It just, it, it would be a lot of work for me to figure out what that was. And I don't know that it particularly matters. I mean, you're like, well, then anyone can play it anywhere. Sure. But sometimes the game is language independent and it shouldn't be. They should actually put the text on the cards. Also, might it not just be top 10 abstracts? What unique games are in the library? I know the big ice cool and epic galaxies. Any others? I'm trying to make a list of games. I want to play Dice Tower East, mostly rare games. Is there a full list available? Well, if you go to Tabletop, it, we, we're keeping our list up to date there. But I... You know, that you mention it, I'm going to be making a list of games that say we're the only place in the world or one of the few places in the world to get this. Currently, we are, Wendy is working on right now, so somebody online made a version of Horrified called Terrified, which is just like Horrified, um, but they changed everything up and there is... Uh, Freddy Krueger and Chucky in it and everything, and it looks exactly the same, the same style as Horrified does, but with different monsters and act different ways. So this requires a lot of work, paste-ups and everything. I'm doing it. 
because I want to put this in the Dice Tower Library. My Magical Athlete is also unique and stuff. So like I said, I'm going to have a list of the games that I find are fairly unique in our collection. So you'll be able to find that when you come. Have you considered having a jump made for the marble track? Be somewhere to the ramp, but the marble would have to jump a water hole or some other hazard with slower routes if they go around. That's definitely on the list of ideas that I've given to uh, Woodfish Toys. <whistles> Who do you hate, Suru? Um, Chris, I do hate Suru. Um... You ever feel like the Marvel heroes are actually the villains? Maybe. Like Moon Knight, sure, cults aren't cool, but World Peace is, and he stops that. I don't know if you can argue that. World Peace, I saw a lot of people getting murdered there. Um, the world seemed better post-Snap, too. Yeah, no, that's not true. I'm not killing half the people in the universe to make myself happy. That's evil. Uh, let's see here. Are you definitely coming to Essen in October? Well, I'm definitely planning to. I mean, never say never. Say never. Who knows what might happen, obviously. But we are planning to. The, we're getting very close to buying the tickets for that. Are you going to be doing a review of the next two Funko Verse sets? When I get them, I will do a review of them. Let's see here. Is there any other trend I'm glad is done in board games? Well, I'm glad not everyone and their sister is trying to make a um, a legacy style game. I mean, legacy games can be made. I'm fine, but for a moment there, it seemed like everybody was ready to jump on that boat. So I'm kind of glad that's done. I'm sure there's other trends too, but I don't know. Trends come and go. Are you looking to bring the history of the Dice Tower up to date? It ended at part 14 with a 2017 update, and it was a wonderful series. Um, who knows? I might do it next year, and that might be one of my stretch goals for my next Kickstarter campaign. We'll see. A neoprene mat for that space... Flicking dexterity game. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that might work. Um, he was only doing the snap to impress death. No, I know why I did it in the comics. I think people are talking about the MCU. What would be your criteria for investing in inserts and upgraded pieces for games? Some inserts organized and upgraded pieces can cost more than a game itself, but can really heighten a game. Yeah, I don't I don't care. I'm really at that point. I would rather... So we were talking about this. There's a game coming out, Ra, right? So if you get the upgraded version of Ra, it costs double the regular version. I think it was $40, $80. And we were talking about that. The, when my game group came over Saturday, we were talking about that. And I said, you know... Because the one guy's like, I don't know, I love Ra, but is it worth getting? I was like, if you love Ra, get the upgraded version. And then don't buy another game that you're not sure of. To me, it's always better to invest in a game I'm sure of and make it the best gaming experience I can, rather than just buy a bunch of games and some of them I don't like. Uh, let's see... Well, oh, did I catch up on questions? Did I skip some questions? I mean, I did skip questions, obviously, but I think I caught up on questions. You need to ask me more questions. We have 16 more minutes to go. So I got some reviews coming up this week. Um, someone mentioned Dead Reckoning. That review is actually coming out this week, so you'll find out what I think about it there. Um... I notice you all are giving less 10s. Is it because games are getting better and more competition? Not particularly. And I don't know that why you would think we're giving less 10s. I very rarely give 10s, period. Let's see on Board Game Geek what games I've given a 10 to. Aha. 
All right, Tom Vassell, we've got a profile. Where's my games that I've ranked? I've ranked 91 games a 10. That's not quite true. It's going to round up my 9.5, so I'm not going to even include those. So here we go. Cosmic Encounter I gave a 10 to. That came out in 77. I'm going to skip all expansions, too, because that doesn't matter. Heroescape I've given a 10 to, but that's actually going to get dropped down to a 9, so that doesn't count. Um... But that came out in 2004. Pitch Car has a 10. 2019. <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of games here I've ranked 10 that are no longer 10s for me. Lahab is still a 10, 2008. Summoner Wars I gave a 10 to. That came out in 2009. Uh, lots of expansions here. Kemet, 2012. Viticulture, 2013. Caverna, 2013. Robot Turtles, 2013. Ooh, that's three in 2013. I was going wild that year. Um, uh, Project Elite, 2016. Gloomhaven, 2017. Seventh Continent, 2017. Um... Chronicles of Crime, 2018. Uh, la, 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 la. The Crew, 2019. Pandemic Legacy Season Zero, 2020. And I'm, all, I'm, not, I'm also not talking about reprints of games either. because And then Arc Nova, 2021. It looks like I give out one or two a year, maybe? I don't think that I suddenly am starting to give out fewer 10s. Alrighty. Oh yeah, my Faces deck is in the library. That would be another unique game that only we have. Uh, let's see here. How are you about hugs at the Dice Tower conventions? Go ahead. Uh, so, the, the gang laughs at me about this because I am not a hugger. I, I didn't grow up with hugs and don't, don't feel bad for me. It's not like my parents didn't love me. My parents loved me very much. We just didn't hug a lot. My dad hugged me a few times in my life. My mom hugged me more than that, but I didn't hug anybody else. And up north... At least when I grew up where I lived, people didn't hug each other when they met, and that sort of thing didn't happen. I moved down south, and like everyone's hugging everybody. I don't know these people. So I have a slight natural aversion to it. I'm trying to work my way through that. I definitely hug my kids all the time. I hug my wife all the time. So that's not a problem. Um, and, you know, here down in the Hispanic community here, they, they kiss people on the cheeks, and that's even more than a hug. And I'm like, mm. so you can hug me. I probably won't initiate a hug with you, <laughs> probably at all. But don't feel bad. Do what you need to do. I'm going to get a gazillion hugs at the next convention now, probably. Watch that. All righty. Coffee or tea? Definitely tea. What's my favorite non-superhero comic book? Bone. What brand hat are you wearing? This is Epoch. E-P-O-C-H. Any chance we'll see Eric do the podcast with you in Dice Tower Studio as opposed to his home studio? Not likely. He lives in Connecticut. We're down here in the homestead. Maybe when he comes down, we'll do one live. If you were, if you had to be a professional athlete, what sport would you choose? Baseball, for sure. How do you decide which games go to the four square versus individual reviews? I just make the call. I try to do one every week, and I'll be like, this is the game that's going to happen this week. What comic book needs to get a movie TV adaptation? Bone. <laughs> um, will I be tuning into the Amazon Lord of the Rings series? At the beginning, of course. We'll see if I get... Tuned out on it, like I really got tuned out on and worn out on the uh, Wheel of Time. 
I have high hopes for a lot of this stuff, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um... If you could have any pizza from any place made in any way, what would it be? A uh, New York pizza. They're my favorite. I really like those. And my toppings on top of it would be whatever I was in the mood for at the time. Did you know Jeff Smith's bone was getting a Netflix series, but it just got canceled a few days ago? No! That's too bad. I really like it. Well, it will come eventually. Did we get a Chief Sokotoa update? No, no, no. I don't think anything has changed with Chief Sokotoa. Um, what, we met a few weeks from now, and so he would say to me um, that he's doing fine, um, but that's pretty much all I, I could do. There was, he was actually involved with a murder mystery on a train. Now, this is a five-dimensional train. Um, it goes between Volksar 649 and Volksar 663. But Volkser 663 is, of course, in the Quasax dimension, obviously. Um, so it's a, it's a weird train route, and it takes 10 years, but it's all relative time. It's as if only 3.7 days have passed in real time. But sure, it made for a really long thing. The person who was the murderer finally died of a heart attack, unrelated, four years after the events. But she still told him was so close to figuring it out. Um, but they did keep him from murdering anybody else, and the murder was over a jilted thing. Um, I think it was a, a job or something. It was the, the, actual, the, the actual reasoning behind it was not that interesting. But what was interesting was the person who the murderer killed was the wrong person. Uh, person, I mean, it was an alien. It was a, a Fuzumbak, I think. And they only killed half of them. So the other half is what kind of brought everything together. The other half merged with a third half, and so they became a different creature, and that's really a pain when it comes to interrogation. Um, and so they're thinking about not allowing the, 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 the post-death post, um, merges allow on during a murder thing. The problem is, is that that other half might have died. So I think this is going up to a higher court in the Fallupian system. Um, it's, it's an interesting thing, but those guys dither for long periods of time. So I don't think we'll see anything happen with that soon. But uh, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's the news he'll tell me in a, in a couple weeks. I hate game ratings as much or more than top. No, I like game ratings. I just don't like giving them out as much because people read too much into the number. Saw you last week at my local game store. It said, hi, yes. Oh, great. Well, your local game store is very new then. Um, with COVID starting down, how do you predict a large uptick for in-person board games or has online games changed the market? No, I think we'll see people playing games in person again, for sure. We're seeing a lot of that. Um, yeah, if you saw me and you want to play games with me, email me at tom at dicetower.com and I'll add you to the list. Let's see here. Are you currently on ranking the Marvel United X-Men characters? No, I haven't got the game yet. Well, I got the game, but I didn't get the expansions yet. Let's see here. If you do manage to come to Essen in October, what will be the best way to meet you and the Dice Tower team, or will it be by luck of bumping into you by chance? Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to have a booth with Rathskellers. So you'll be able to come by and visit us there. If you want to see me, usually the way that we work it out is I'm there for the first hour and the last hour of each day. So if you really want to see us, that's, that's when you know we can be there. We'll probably have a schedule up of when different Dice Tower people will be there. Did you drink Huggies when you were a kid? Oh, yeah, I did. That bug juice, right? Wow, I forgot those things existed. They used to come in a big pack. Uh, if you've never seen a huggy, it's basically, we call it bug juice. It's like a punch of sorts. And they were not a, quite a ball, but they expanded in the middle, small at the top, smaller at the bottom. With a, like They were like a, a, a thing, and you, you had, they had a foil lid. You could poke a straw through it or peel the lid off and drink it. Yeah, man, those are great. What have you played the most this year so far? Well, I want to say it's Ark Nova. Probably it is Ark Nova. No, it is Ark Nova. But I'll tell you what, Planet Unknown is catching up to it. I've been playing a lot of Planet Unknown. 
stop in front of Tom, hug each other, and walk away. I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to people hugging each other. <laughs> you shouldn't feel like you have to hug, folks. Let's be, let's just normalize being understand people's boundaries. Well, I want to be clear on this. I'm not like opposed to hugging, and you're not going to get me upset by hugging me. It's just something that I'm learning to do. It doesn't bother me that much. I, I'm not like some wallflower I can't be hugged. It's just that it's something I'm learning on. You know, so uh, maybe the more people hug me, the better I'll get at it. Sorry if this has been obvious or been covered before. Why are the A-Team called the A-Team? Because that's the name they picked. Batman or Superman? I like Batman better. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Next Kickstarter stretch goal. Tom wears a sign at the next convention that says, Hug me. Maybe. We'll see. Is your board game review format influenced by a certain style or famous critic? Not particularly. I just, that's the way I would want to watch a review, so that's how I do it. That's all. Thoughts on Chicago pizza? Let's go back to that word that we mentioned earlier overrated. That's why I think about it. I don't really, I don't dislike it. It doesn't feel like it's pizza. Now, to be fair, I grew up in the Northeast, so obviously I'm going to tilt towards New York pizza. But I like eating pizza. I like the toppings a lot. But if I'm going to eat Chicago pizza, I'd rather have a Stromboli. I really like Strombolis. So to me, I get pizza or Stromboli. Chicago pizza, I had it, and I was like, meh, that's okay. It was fine. I didn't hate it, but I'd rather have New York pizza. And before I get the, the plethora of other combinations of pizza from various places, I get it. There's lots of good pizza all over the place. Tom, are you doing anything special for Shark Week? When is Shark Week? I don't keep track of that because pretty much no one cares. Uh, the Shoots of Marbles track uh, came from Woodfish Toys. Uh, this was a custom one they built for us, so there's that. Um... How much time did you spend putting the Friday shipping show together? Was it sudden or a slow burn? No, no, no. It was it was not not sudden's a strong word, but I, I planned it like three days or four days beforehand. I asked both the publishers, so I'm sure they came in with their thoughts. I thought about what I was gonna say, but there wasn't a lot of planning going on behind the scenes. Do you feel that games are getting progressively better? I 100 percent think games are getting progressively better. Have you played Magic Jumpstart yet? Uh, no, we're saving that for, we're going to play that when we do one of our We'll Play It Live episodes, so we're just saving it for then. How often do you play games that never get reviewed? A eh, decent amount. What are the most beaten up boxes in your collection? Oh, they're ones that have been moved around and pulled out of the library a lot, probably. I wouldn't know off the top of my head what they are. Is there a Chronicles of Crime scenario with all the Dice Star promos? Yes, it's currently being uh, play tested. I have yet to hear from any of the play testers. So eventually I hear back from some of them. When I hear that, if people say, hey, there's no problems in this or they've seen it, it works fine, then we'll post it online for everybody. Ice cream or custard? Gelato. Are you open to being a guest virtually in a local board game event in other countries? Maybe, but that's a lot of work, and it maybe is the best I can say to that. Sorry. Key lime pie, green or white? A key lime pie should be close to white, not quite white. Yellowish a bit, but it's definitely not green. That's right. It's a barrel. I don't know why I struggled to tell you how Huggy was shaped. It's a barrel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Huggies makes me think of baby diapers. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. Tom, Friday's a day when there aren't many live game streams from many sites. I agree, 
but also Friday's a day where sometimes we want to work on other things and here at the Dice Tower Studio, or we just want to play a game. Streaming live all the time, folks, is a lot of work. We do a ton of streaming here from the Dice Tower. So keep that in mind. It's not something that we can just do over and over and over and over and over again. All right. Well, folks, that's all the questions I have time for today. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower. I'll see you all tomorrow. Well, I won't see you tomorrow, but the A-Team will be here continuing their top 100 games at noon. And then I'll be back at 3 o'clock for some more Shoots and Marbles nonsense. The zombies are back. Um, so until then, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Q&A on the Dice Tower. Pam 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 Oh wait everybody Welcome back to our Marble Championships. And today we have the Blue Horde is here. And they're looking fresh. They haven't been out for a while. They're sponsored by Winter Mint Mouthwash. And then we have kind of just the rough and tumble sand edge team with the round dice here. I believe it's a pretty fair matchup, but we're about to see what happens. Let's get our dice towers ready to go. Let's get the dead piles prepared, and here we go. First up, a five beats a three. Well, one of the horde is gone, so that was a pretty, uh, and a two beats a one. That's two of the horde gone in the very first round of the game. A five and a five, mutual elimination. So the sand team is pretty happy here, a six beating a three, because their round dice here are doing pretty well. A five and a five. Again, some mutual destruction. The Horde has yet to win a single battle. A four beating a one. Not too good for the Horde. A four beating a two. Whew. The Horde is looking a little green. Whoops. I believe. There we go. A six and a six. Another mutual elimination. So the Horde has actually a one and a one. That's four mutual eliminations. Pretty impressive. Ah, there's the first Horde victory. Um, so, number-wise, the Horde should be doing better. Three beating a two. Okay, the Horde has a bit of a rebound here. Feeling better. By the way, my name is Chip Lazinski, and this is my friend Bob la bob bob Oh, it's been a tough week. Oh, Bob, don't be bringing everybody down. Doesn't matter what the Horde number is. A seven definitely beats it. Four and four. Well, there's a mutual elimination. That's not so bad for the Horde. They took out an eight-sided die. Uh, well, seven beating a one isn't particularly good here. Oh, oh, a seven beats a four. Whew. Bob, this may be one of the first faster wipeouts we've ever seen. A three beats a one. There goes a ten-sided die. The Horde feels a little better, but they still only have won once. Ah, six beats a five. Nice. So, Bob, you were on vacation. How did it go? Well, oh, mutual elimination. Well, you know, what's the matter, Bob? I'm trying to get a degree. Two beats a one. What are you getting a degree in, Bob? I'm getting a degree, six beats a five. I'm getting a degree in, in engineering so I can get out of this garbage job. Bob, everyone here treats you with respect. How could you say it's garbage? It's garbage. Bob, you know, you keep talking like that in air. You're not going to have a job anymore. Nobody else will work with you. Eh, that's true. Bob, while you've been complaining about your job, the Horde has suddenly had a resurgence and has taken out several of the ten-sided dice. This is feeling pretty good. And they just still got to... I mean, they're killing their own dice to do it, but whew, we're now up to the 12-sided dice. So this is probably where the Horde is going to take a beating because they are twice as good. <laughs> Get it, Bob? Yeah, I got it. 12 to 1. Wow, the 12-sided dice are coming out strong. Ooh, a double elimination, which for the Horde is pretty much a victory, but they only have so many times that they can do that. Continuing with the 20 sides. Or, ooh, a 1. There goes our first 12-sider that's been soundly defeated. 
but that is not normally the case. All right, so the sand team here has 720 siders. Let's see what they can do. 18 beats a six, it's not even close. 19 beats a five. Ooh, a six beats a three. That's one of the 20 siders out. One out of seven of them. A three beats a one. Oh man, of all the times to roll one. A five beats a two, that's two of the 20 siders out of the mix. Wow, they rolled a one. Horde rolled an eight though. I mean, uh, the sorry, the sand team rolled an eight. And a six beats a five. No, oh, that was a five. Mutual elimination. All right, that was round one. So the Horde has lost a lot of their dice, but they have so many to begin with that they're still feeling pretty good. Let's let's do some some math here, Bob. Oh, math. Bob, you're, you said you want to be an engineer. You need to know your math. Okay. All right, Bob, let's see. So we're lining up the Horde just to see how many there are. We're going to put them in groups of five. So that's a 30 so far. Here's another 10. Wow, the Horde have 40... Three dice left over, while the sand team has 10, 15, 21. The horde has almost double the numbers. Let's see what happens after this round. Alrighty, a six beats a three. The horde wins the first matchup of the of the second round. They win the second matchup of the second round, and they win the. Wait a minute. How are you saying they won? Oh, sorry. This isn't rigged. I promise. They didn't win the third matchup, but they did win the fourth matchup. This is not particularly good. Out of the first, out of the first uh, six matchups, the Horde won three of them. Sand Team won one, and there was mutual elimination, which again is kind of a victory for the Horde. But here's where things are going to get hairy, because we're coming in with the eight-sided dice. Another Horde gone. Oh, one of the eight-siders is gone. Oh, you cannot be losing every other match, Sand Team. A four and a four eliminates both. I think that's all the eight-siders there are, up to the ten-siders. Well, there's a Horde gone. Uh, another ten-sider. Another Horde gone. Up to the uh, last ten-sider. Whew. Okay, another Horde gone. Now the twelve-siders. All right, the twelve-siders are doing a much better job at what we want to get. So that's a, they're just crushing. The 12 side, ooh, a two beats a one. The Horde won that one. A two and a two. That's two 12 siders taken out in a row. Five beats a three. All right, we have only four of the original 720s left over, but a 20 beats a six. We're not playing with the 20 kills two rule because with, uh, that was banned. It's only done in the American League. Wow, the three three of the 20s just walked over. That's another natural 20. All right, so we're bringing them back in. So the Horde has lost a considerable amount of dice there. Let's see how many they have left over. So they have 10, 15, 20, 25, 27. Nope, 28. Nope, 27. Bob, you should have been correcting me on that. Oh, yeah, no problem. 5, 10 to 13. The Horde still has twice the amount as the Sand Team. A 4 to 3. The Horde wins the first matchup. There's only one of the six siders left. Zero of the round dice are left. Now down to the eight sided dice. Oh, there goes our first Horde casualty, but still, you cannot allow this sort of thing to happen. 8 beats a 1. The ten siders came out with a nice jump here. A two beats a one. Oh man! And a three and a three. They take each other out. Up to the twelve siders. Seven beats a six. Ooh, that's got to hurt for the horde. And eleven beats a six. The twelve siders are determined to kind of win this on their own. A three beats a two. There goes another twelve sider out of the game. And here's our four twenties. Will they be able to get four wins in a row? An 18 beats a 3. A 6 beats a 1. A 3 beats a 1. Oh, too bad for the Horde on that one. They had a chance there. And a 15 beats a 6. So those 420s are remaining strong. So the Horde now has 5, 
10, 18 left, while the sand team only has eight. Again, mathematically, the horde is doing very well. A four beats a one, there's no more eight-sided dice left. And there's only one 10-sided die left, who just did win, fortunately. Two 20-sided dice left. 12 beats a four. A five beats a one, that's the, the other 12 is out. Here comes our four 20s. A five beats a three, it's another 20 that's out. The sand team is down to five dice. They take out another horde. They take out another horde. And they take out another horde. All right, all right. All right, so we have five and 10. Actually, I think I put in two of them in here when they shouldn't have, when they beat them. All right, so we have 12 to five. Here we go. It is now 12, uh, 11 to five. Oh, a horde beats him. It's now 11 to four. Oh, double elimination. It is now 10 to three. Nine to three. Eight to three. Seven to three. The 20 sider. Six to three. Five to three. Four to three. Oh, a four beats a three. They're down to three dice each. Okay, this ain't looking good for the horde here, folks, because there is a 10 and two 20s against three hordes. Uh, betting is now closed for those of you who are willing to bet. Bob, what? Oh, I was trying to make some money. All right, Bob, well, enough about your sad sack of a life. Here we go. The final three matches, probably. A 10 versus a three. A four beats a one. There's only two people in the horde left. A seven beats a two. Can this one six-sided die beat two 20s and a 10? Highly doubtful. Oh, a six beats a five. There's the final round has been not the final round. All right, a 10 versus six. Is this it? Is this it? The, the 10 roll a two and the horde roll a three. Oh my goodness, we're down to the final matchup here. This is it, this is it. All right. Well, the six sided, the chances of winning are so minuscule here because they have to roll higher than a 20. Both sides are getting ready. Oh, wait, there's some more dice coming out. They're, they're patting them down, giving them some water here. Oh, this is a kind of an underdog story here for the Horde because the Horde does have the numbers, but this is not in their favor. The odds are not in their favor. What do you think, Bob? Bob, are the odds ever in their favor? Stop it. All right, here we go. Do, 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 do. Oh my word! The 20 side, it was a two, and the horde is a four! The horde wins! Ah! The horde is going insane! Ah! Oh no, they're getting close. They're rocking the vehicle of the other one. Oh, they knocked them all out! Now there's a full out brawl! They're fighting back and forth, Bob! I don't know what to say! It's just too gruesome! Oh, there are shards of dice everywhere! What can we do? Bob, what should we do? Yeah.